Tell me why my nickname growing up in a Nigerian household was horrible. They will remind you of your five. You shall not forget. Don't you ever forget. Welcome and welcome back to my channel. My name is Zogi and I'm a Gemini, which is why this channel is called Zogi the Gemini, Gemini, Gemini. So today I'm back with another video. Growing up big in an African household is not for the week. Mm -mm. Let me tell you that for now. Let me tell you that for free. It is not for the weak and it's not for the faint hearted. And if you want to find out what exactly I've endured, then stay tuned. And whilst you're there, make sure you like like the video right now i'll wait yeah you like it yeah. cool comment and subscribe now let's get into the video so as i said to you guys yeah i've always been big like I, i'm not one of the girls where i was slim before and i i, I gained a significant amount of weight i've been big from when i was born i'm just kidding but i've always been like overweight per se and yeah i really felt that when i was young from school i spoke a little bit about school and my experiences but it's time for me to tell you guys about family experiences my nuclear family guys completely fine obviously like my older siblings will be like oh lose weight da, 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 da. but it was never like bullying or like you know no one's ever made me feel a certain way and i feel like low-key it's because my mom is big too and my mom was big so that kind of balanced out if i was the only fat person in my household yeah i would uh, uh, yeah i'll be done out yeah i do not know how i would have survived all these years but because um my mom is big and we do have big people in my family it definitely did help but it's it's interesting because it's the big girl people that are the most critical and now that i'm older i realize how fat phobic some fat people are and arguably arguably you can disagree with me on this i think loki Big people may not be the most fat phobic, but they are definitely up there. I can't lie. And I, I can understand why. It's how society has treated us and it's how our family has treated us and our friends has treated us. I understand why. It's not good, but I understand. But anyways, as I was saying, I've been big all my life, right? And one comment I'll receive all the time will be like, you'll be so pretty if you just lost some weight. And growing up yeah that definitely hampered on my confidence so much because it's just like okay first and foremost let's unpack this whole you'll be so much prettier if you or you will be pretty if you lost weight first and foremost you're going to be ugly mm? auntie yeah first and foremost that's, that's what you that's what you're doing right now you're calling me ugly you're saying that i'm not pretty you're not saying that i'm not good you're saying i'm not good looking you're saying i'm not you know i'm not a fight to see you're saying all of that secondly you are letting me know from a very young age that beauty is defined by size and you are also letting me know that there's no way i can be big and beautiful it's impossible because since you are emphasizing so sternly on you will look my darling you look pretty, so pretty, if you just lost your weight. And they will say it with passion. They wholeheartedly believe that I would look so pretty if I just lost the weight. Just start like imagining like, you know, do you know what I used to do guys? I used to like imagine in my head that I'm wearing a fat suit. Um, I think it's when Big Mama House came out that like I'm wearing a fat suit and I wish like, oh, guys, 
the way I prayed. I prayed that you know the way um Mar Martin Lawrence can like he can take off Big Mama. Like he can basically go from being a big woman to like a normal sized person. I wished and wished and wished I would be that one day. My body will now become, I don't know, it will now become customizable or I'll be able to modify it. I can just take off the fat and I'll be like, I'm skinny now. But no, nah, that definitely played a big part of my insecurities when growing up. Because from a, sorry, but from a young age, I was told that beauty is defined by your size and you being bigger is impossible for you to be pretty and more than anything society will not see you as pretty your friends not really no one will really deem you as someone that's pretty no one will deem you as someone that's worthy because you are bigger on the scales that's the first thing that pissed me off and made it so traumatic growing up in an African household okay second one is more specific to Nigeria yeah Nigerians tell me why tell me why guys if you're Nigerian comment down below comment down below please 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 tell me why everyone around me my family people will be like my darling and um, beautiful da, 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 da. everyone will get nice nicknames everyone will get cute nicknames someone will be like oh beautiful or pretty or girl with a nice da, 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 da. nice cute nicknames will be passed down generally will be said to you know young people yeah my friends will get really nice ones Tell me why my nickname, growing up in a Nigerian household, was Orobo. Nothing more, nothing less. Orobo means a fat person, basically. Um, yeah, Orobo means fat. Or, if they don't say Orobo, they'll make the variation of Biggie. So, basically, any nickname, all the nicknames that was given to me, they all allude to my size. So it's either the outright say Biggie, like Biggie. Obviously that's self-explanatory in the word Biggie. Or they'll say Orobo. I and the worst yet it was when I, I will actually go to Nigeria. Even to this day. Even to this day, if you guys watch my Lagos vlogs, yeah. Even to this day, obviously there's levels now, they can't just call you fat person. But if you they ask to describe you they will say oh yeah that horrible there that or they may even say oh that pretty horrible or that dark horrible or that tall horrible but horrible must be there horrible will find its way there i feel like africans nigerians have this chokehold on reminding you when you are bigger they will remind you of your size you should not forget don't you ever forget don't ever get shit twisted you are bigger and we will remind you on a daily basis that you are bigger and i think with that yeah it just made it it's just awkward do you know what i mean and especially when like everyone else gets like different nicknames you're just being like penalized on obviously you being on a larger scale and with the combination of people saying oh you look prettier if you lost weight and then them referring to me as horrible like when we go parties or just like do family functions it's like there will be such an over scrutiny on your plate and this oh god they're thinking of it as a child like if your child is big do not um, segregate them. Do not put them in a corner. Just find healthier lifestyles, healthier alternatives. What is it making them? Is it that they don't walk enough? Is it that they like sugar too much? What is making them how they are? Find an alternative and have that conversation with them. Don't just like blackball them so when we have like a family function yeah i know they send all the children oh yeah go and go and get your rice go and get go and get your plate and then when i'm coming back here the aunties will literally be looking at my plate like why did you not put more salad the rice is too much 
Do you know rice is not good for you? You're, you're, you're only too big. Ah! The trauma, the trauma, the trauma. You're, you're thinking to a 10 year old, yeah? That the, did I give myself the rice? If it's not the auntie that was seven that gave me the rice. So the aunties I can just remember like they were literally as I'm walking back into the living room or walking back to the room like all my cousins call da, 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 da. they're not watching them but in fact they will look at my plate and say it's okay the rice is too much you gotta put more salad or um, coleslaw I'm like the sal salad yeah is bloody covered in mayonnaise salad cream so really truly at this point the jollof rice the rice and the salad have equal calories because because really and truly, salad I've drenched in dressing is really not that healthy. But anyways, but just that over scrutiny and like, ah, oh, being so ashamed to eat in public um, and eat in front of people. And I feel like that definitely contributed to, obviously, not now, yeah, my weight now. But definitely me being oversized when I was younger because what I would do is sneaky. Like you will eat behind closed doors. You will not eat in front of people because if you ate in front of people, you will be met with judgment. So instead, you will eat minimal, very, very small plates, very small plates in front of adults, in front of people because, you know, if even if you even add two chickens it's not one chicken you know already you're gonna be criticized so i will do like minimal food in front of aunties and stuff in front of family members um as i said not my nuclear family my nuclear family was perfectly fine it's extended that's why i keep referring to aunties because if the devilish aunties are married husband the aunties with the perverted um husband that had no business anyways it's them it's them yeah um that it, it just obviously made me so self-conscious so i wouldn't feel comfortable you know and i feel like to this day arguably i still don't feel comfortable to eating in front of people like more time you will not catch me eating in front of you like i'll go to my room i think that definitely embedded itself into me because obviously like i was met with so much judgment when i was young and they'll be like watching me and it's like oh even when you're even when I'm eating here, yeah, they'll be like, calm down, the food is not running anywhere. <laughs> Leave me alone. Leave me alone. They'll be like, calm down, the food is not going anywhere. Or like, why are you breathing like that? Or like so much and just imagine there's like kids around you yeah, and everyone is like enjoying themselves but you're the one that they literally watching how you are putting it into your mouth and be like don't bite so hard or that make sure you chew your food properly don't just swallow it just imagine they're not saying anything to anyone else apart from you that shit was so embarrassing and it's like already i know i stand out because i'm bigger than every all of the other kids but flipping out as an adult surely you will know you know how it feels to be singled out you know how it feels to be ridiculed you know how it feels to be ridiculed you know how it feels to be like pointed out or like do you know what i mean to be criticized you don't like that as an adult and me as an adult no, i know i would hate if anyone wants to do that to me so why would you do that to a child? But you see these African aunties? They're on another level. Their wickedness is on another level. But yeah, in hindsight, that definitely, definitely contributed to me having a bad relationship with food. Because obviously when you're young, you want to eat sugary stuff. And if I know I cannot comfortably eat a cake or a crisp or a fizzy drink in front of you, all I will do is do it in private. Like, if I know that if I eat like a sh like even when you know, oh, even when you're even when you go to parties, yeah, and you're given that happy bag, it's not happy bag, it's that party bag. Sorry, like the aunties will be looking like, I hope there's not too much sweet in there. To see if they have apple. What? 
why 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 would i need anyways back to my point yeah um because there was such scrutiny um on me like with the sugary the things that are not healthy for me as i said all i done was all i done was just eat it when no one was watching and the biggest thing that created was i didn't know moderation i will eat till i will eat the sweet the cake as much as i want as much as i deem fit i did not no moderation because they were not allowing me to actually because think of it in general you will give kids sweets you will give kids kids cake da, 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 yeah but you tell them listen you only have this amount because if you do it can make you you know unhealthy it can make your teeth hurt blah 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 then a kid and then you substitute like okay eat food and you can have a little bit da, 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 da. but if you're saying that i shouldn't have it at all yeah then all you're doing is making me we all know we want something that we can't have that's what we want the most so if you're telling me oh don't eat this because you're big already don't this because you're big already it's me if you're honestly gonna make me want to do it even more and i feel like one of the biggest things that contributed to me being big when i was younger is that i was born with like a bent leg yeah so you know how your knees join like this like straight my knees join like that so i had like a that one of the most extreme cases of a bow leg basically one of my legs was like really nothing because bow leg is just kind of did my knee like was to the left it wasn't straight it was to the left so anyways i done an operation um and stuff but like that restricted my mobility from a young age so when like you know kids were running around i couldn't do that i, I had a living disability so that definitely contributed to obviously me being bigger um so i don't really think i was bigger because i was just eating all the cakes no it's because i could not do as much as other kids could do and with the combination of these aunties and these judgmental family and how are we going to family members these judgmental individuals it just made me want things that i didn't need like make me it made me overindulge in things that i really shouldn't have because of how high those things are in calories does that make sense so then there's the aunties there yeah and as i said i had it bad but not even too too bad because my mom was bigger yeah so no one could really stick on me or really bully me too tough because my mom was on the bigger side and my mom my mom yeah my mom you can't you can't chat for her especially since i'm the youngest you can't all these aunties that were saying this they didn't say when my mom was there you know they won't say this shit when my mom was there they'll say it when and because my mom traveled a lot on business like we will go like my dad will take me and my siblings to parties but obviously my mom's not there um all of this shit will pop off when my mom's not there because my mom was there these aunties could never they could never they will never they won't the, the energy they will not have it the energy they will not be able to find it nor they would they be able to locate it it was always when my mom wasn't there so yeah so my mom installed into me like if someone says something to you say something back kind of thing and that definitely helped with my confidence in as much as like it was definitely tested by family members it was also strengthened just off the back of my mom being such a confident and hard-headed and you know stern woman does that make sense but that definitely helped with the aunties but what didn't help and i don't even want to put this next point um on just being african or being nigerian i think it's just men i, I can't lie i think it, it is men and how thick some men can be um obviously as i said i was bigger when i was younger so um, some of my body features was more developed. Um, most of my breast, I've always had like something there since I was like 13. Um, in comparison, obviously, to my friends or family members, they did. They were still developing whilst I had something there. And looking back here, 
I now realize there are so many perverted uncles. Like, why are you telling a 14 year old that their body looks nice in the dress that they're wearing? And so many things, like, I knew it was wrong. I'm like, I don't think this guy should be telling me this. But if only as an adult, you know how perverted and how wrong it is for a grown man to be lusting over a little girl. These are men that could literally be my dad. And I'll throw this shit out there. These are men that were also my dad's friends. So if you're my dad's friend, so you are 100% old enough to be my dad. And you're lusting over a little girl telling me that, oh, I suffered in this life. I suffered in this life. Yeah. But as I said, I don't think if um, this is just like an African thing, I just feel like it's just, you know, if you developed faster than others, or even if you developed at the right pace, you may have obviously experienced this when you was younger. But yeah, let me wrap up the video. This video is not very long, but I just wanted to make a quick video and talk about the the, the, the punishment, yeah? The trauma that growing up in an African household and being fat, the trauma you go through, it's not, it, it, it's not for the weak hearted. It's not for the faint hearted. It's not, it, 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 yeah, yeah, it's not, but yeah, Thank you so much for watching the video. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Comment. I don't know why I said comment. Comment and subscribe. And I'll see you next time. Bye, guys.